So let me just finish this proof of the statement I was making. So I've got CI, the statement is CI uh, a negative definite bunch of curves. And I'm assuming that it's rational in the sense I've just been describing. So the union of the CI is rational, meaning H1 OD <coughs> is zero for all. <coughs> okay, so what's the, uh, so what am I what am I, what am I trying to do? So first of all, let me make the following remark: Neg if uh, if CI are if the intersection number CI CJ is negative definite. then it is also non-degenerate. Non In other words, if I've got a matrix, if I've got M, I, J, and it's negative definite quadratic form, then it's also non-degenerate. De non so, uh, you know, it means over, over, over R, it di it's diagonal, diagonal minus one, minus one. So R uh, over Q, it's also diagonalizable, but you'd have elements in the quadratic numbers in the in the in Q modulo squares, <coughs> right? But in any case, if it's negative definite, then it means it's a non-singular matrix. So the matrix is non-singular. Okay, so I've got my surface S, and it's somehow embedded in Pn. It's got at least one embedding. Maybe it's only got exactly one. Uh, maybe it's only got one embedding. Right, and so, let, so I write H is the ample class. Right, so I uh, look at the form H times Ci. Right, so this is a linear form on the lattice, on the lattice, uh, so let me write sigma z times ci. But this matrix is non-singular, and this means that uh, uh, it can be expressed, it can be expressed Uh, so let me say, um, let me say B times CI with B is sigma M I J C J. Okay, so I've so I've got this lattice here. It's got it's got an intersection pairing on it. The intersection pairing is non 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 degenerate. This means if I've got any linear form there, uh, I'm linear form. Let's, I'm think, really thinking over Q, linear form with rational coefficients, then I can find some, some, ele some element in the same lattice, B, so that that B times the CI is the same as the H times the CI. Right? So then B times CI equals H times CI. A the, H, the H is at, from outside. The H is the hyperplane section of the variety, whereas the, this B is... Uh, B is uh, sigma Mij Cj and the Mij are in Q. Okay, then necessarily every Mij is negative, right? Because B times B times uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean that. Oh, yes, I do. I don't mean. That's what I don't mean. This is a sum of the curves J. Right, so, uh, so because B times C J is negative. So B times each of the CIs is negative. And the only way a divisor there can be 
uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, I'm sorry. H times Ci is positive, and so B times Ci is positive, and this, and this, this means that um, Uh, well, so the, the, you know, the, this is one of these places where you know, you've sort of got to think a bit like an algebraist. An algebraist uh, finds a clever proof. So write b as b plus minus b minus and so on. Right? So suppose I can write him as a sum of uh, an effective divisor and a negative divisor with both effective and no common components. Right, so if I have this and I say, I say uh, b plus is 0 and b minus is, involves every curve. <coughs> because, uh, because otherwise I, would take, I could take b plus all squared and that's got to be negative. Right, and that contradicts this. <coughs> Which is a contradiction. So, so that, that proves the B plus is zero, and then, you know, what about the B minus? Well, you know, if there's some curve C that's not involved in it, then, so, so this, imp this implies this guy, right? And then if, uh, if CI is not contained in uh, B minus, then minus B minus times CI is uh, necessarily less than or equal to zero, and that's a contradiction. <coughs> okay, and so, uh, uh, so, so this is the proof of this, necessarily every MIJ is negative. Okay, so of course now I'm going to say, so define, um, uh, define D to be uh, minus, so N times minus uh, B, where N, so with the uh, N just N clears denominators. Right. So uh, you know this. I've I've got this quadratic form. I find some. I can find. I've got a linear form on it. Right. And I found a vector here that represents a linear form. So, so first of all, the vector is negative, but this vector has rational coefficients, right? So then, then D is an effective divisor, and uh, H plus D, so uh, you know NH, NH plus D um, times CI is zero for all I. Okay. And so I'm going to assume also, uh, by taking, possibly taking a bigger n, I can assume H1 OS of yeah, NH is 0. So this is just say a vanishing. Right, and then as I said uh, in the interval, uh, so I'm, I'm looking at, if I take uh, the sheaf OS of NH plus D. Right, this has an exact sequence like this, where here I'm restricting to o, uh, OD. Right. So, uh, you know, uh, this D is greater than zero. It, it, it involves 
every curve. Ci. And then, so the kernel here is ONH. Right, so I, I'm assuming that H1 is 0 here. And so this means if I take H0 there, it maps onto H0 there. Right, so I'm not going to use the whole of map, maps onto. I don't know how to use, I don't know how to use it. But, I, but I, there is the constant function here. Or if D is, uh, if D is disconnected, <coughs> if D has more than one connected, then uh, take one, uh, <coughs> one unit function <coughs> for each <coughs> connected component. Right, let's just assume that D is connected. <coughs> Right, and so now I take uh, H naught of N H plus D, I take this vector space, so, so let me take, <coughs> uh, <coughs> this certainly contains H naught of OS of N H. <coughs> right, and this is very ample on, on the whole of S. Right, and, it, and then I can also take some additional element in here, T, that maps to 1 in <coughs> OD. <coughs> H not of OD, if you prefer. Okay, then, <coughs> then if you think about, uh, if you think about the map phi of this NH plus D, together with this, vec this vector space. So I write V for the vector space spanned by H naught OS of NH, <coughs> together with T. <coughs> right, and I, and I take the linear map, the map defined by this. So this is a map from S to uh, P, now uh, whatever it is some <coughs> yeah, m plus 1. <coughs> okay, so what's happening? So, um, uh, uh, <coughs> t, so the point 0, 0, 0, 0, t, 0, 1, right, where all of these guys are 0, So, uh, so, so this is, so if I take S minus D, then, uh, then already this first part, H naught of OS of N H, <coughs> maps, this, uh, maps this S minus D isomorphically into uh, the image less the point zero, 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 001. Right? So in other words, this if I take if I take all the place where all of these guys vanish, well that's the empty set, right? Except that uh, vanishing on they all vanish on D just by definition. Right? This is the inclusion that this map here is multiplication by the equation of D. So if I take these elements and think of them in there, I've multiplied by the equation of D, so these vanish on D. <coughs> Right? On the other hand, this guy definitely doesn't vanish on D. And uh, so the whole of D is mapped to the single point, 0, 0, 1. Right, so what is, the, what is this map? Well, so in other words, S minus D is mapping, I, I, uh, is, ma is, and it is embedded into some, uh, some new surface. So, uh, you know, T uh, minus the point zero, zero, one <coughs> in P is M plus one. <coughs> right, whereas D is mapped to a single point, is mapped to this point. <coughs> okay, so, so I've done I've done what I what I was trying to do. 
the only uh, so this map is an isomorphism outside D mapping to the surface image sur image surface T minus the single point P. Right, the only problem is it's not normal. Right, so uh, uh, let me just let me explain. So uh, so I hope I hope everybody knows this. If T so so write T for the image. So this is the closure of phi of s minus d, <coughs> or it's uh, phi of s minus d union the point p t. <coughs> okay. So so you know if you think about if you think what I've done uh, if you think what I've done here. If uh, it might, I might have done, for example, something which sort of looks very stupid. If I take the ordinary affine plane, you know, this is the xy plane. So suppose I take a new ring inside this. I take the, the coordinate inside the coordinate ring of this. Suppose I take the ring which is uh, uh, the maximal ideal xy to the power of m, and then all other all uh, uh, this, sorry x, y to the power n, and then all other monomials. All other monomials. Right? Well, if I'm not at the origin, then I've got a, an ample embedding. Right? On the other hand, if I, I am, uh, uh, if I am at the origin, then I've really taken all of this stuff near the origin, and I've really screwed it up into a point. And so I'm getting a kind of surface that looks like this. It's isomorphic to the affine plane outside, but it's got this sort of really horrible cuspidal uh, po point at the origin, <clears throat> right? And so this is not normal. Right? So this, uh, this, this ring here needs, you know, uh, uh, n plus 1 choose 2 generators together with all of these monomials. So it needs, uh, you know, thousands of monomials. <coughs> Um, <clears throat> so it's just affine space, but it's embedded in this really clumsy, uh, non-normal way. <clears throat> right. So uh, you know there is this theory of normalization, which is um, you know easy and in elementary textbooks. So uh, if uh, if v in uh, I shouldn't use the same letter v for different things. If y in a n is an uh, irreducible algebraic variety, it has a coordinate ring k of y, it has k of round brackets y, field of fractions. <coughs> right, and uh, it also has this ring k y twiddles is the integral closure. of the one in the other. Okay? <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I mean, the, the definition of the integral closure is exactly the same as the definition of the ring of integers of a number field. It's a set of all elements in the field that are integrally dependent over the, over the smaller thing. I'm sure everybody's seen this. So this, would, this is a normal ring. Right, so you know, if I've got uh, y squared equals x cubed, plane curve, then uh, you know, if I look at the element y over x, he's in the rational function field, and he satisfies an integral dependence relation. Y over x all squared equals y over x all squared equals x. Right, and so we, uh, and so if I take the normalization, I'm automatically introducing this new element y over x, and then the, and then the thing is a non-singular curve. Right, so there's a theorem associated with this. Well, there are two theorems associated with this. So one is that uh, <coughs> the in, in the uh, normalization, the finiteness of normalization. So namely, uh, k, y, 
twiddles is finite as a module over k of y. <coughs> right? And therefore it's um you know it's a coherent th therefore it's a finitely generated algebra in particular. It's a finite it's a finitely generated uh, K algebra. And so I can take its spec. And then I get Y twiddles maps to Y normalization. I'm sure everybody knows this, but uh, I want to say this. Okay? So, uh, this is a non-trivial result. I mean, it's not all that difficult, but it's a non-trivial result. <coughs> and it's, um, uh, it's, you know, in many ways, it's a forerunner of uh, Sayre's theorems on coherent cohomology. I mean, if you know this, you can prove many of the, many of the, uh, <coughs> uh, many of the statements. Right, and so the, this was the above, this was all, this was all, this was all affine, so, so local in the Zariski topology, <coughs> but you can, there's also a projective version. So, uh, so you know the, what I did there. So the problem with the problem with this is that you can't necessarily normalize while saying in the same projective space. So if I've got uh, if I now if y is in projective space, uh, for example, it could be, uh, e.g. phi of this uh, n, n h plus d v in the previous proof. <coughs> then I can take uh, a y, uh, you know, y i twiddles for each affine piece. Uh, y i in p n. And I can glue them together to our y twiddles. Right, but the problem is this y twiddles is not really in the same projective space. The best way to think about it is think of each of these y i twiddles separately as being in an affine space, complete that to a projective space, and then take y, embed y into the fiber product of all of those. Why I twiddle. So it's a very ugly, very unpleasant construction. Right. And so, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the situation I had above, I had this S mapping to T in P M plus 1. Right. And this T is uh, uh, topologically exactly right. So set theoretically, it's exactly right. But not, not, but possibly not normal. So you know, in the in the, in the case, I'm, main case I'm interested in here, it fails to be normal at just one point, right? But nevertheless, you know, if I take if I take an affine neighbourhood of that point and normalise that, then I'm no longer in projective space. And so uh, you know, the, the 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 thing to do is to take the thing called the uh, uh, Stein fa the Stein factorisation. This is uh, Stein factorization is what Grotendieck says. Uh, Zariski says um, projective normalization. Right, and so uh, what this is is the following thing. So uh, uh, I've got S and OS. I've got this morphism F from S to T. Right, and I can take F lower star OS. Right, so this is some sheaf, this is a, a sheaf of OT algebras. 
right? And you know, it's a sheaf of OT algebras where on each affine piece I just have this construction. Right, and then, so what I want to do is take uh, uh, F lower star OS twiddles is the normal, uh, I'm sorry, this is what I want to say, is the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I want to take, uh, I want to take spec of F lower star OS. Okay, so in the in the present case, what what's uh, what, what's happening here is, uh, I had this exact sequence, uh, O S of N H, mapping to O S of N H plus D, mapping to O D. <coughs> right, and I'm taking all the sections that come from there. Right, and the problem is I don't know that if I took bigger, uh, bigger multiple of this NH, if I took NH plus D, you know, a hundred times, for example, I might get more functions on the neighborhood of D. I can't, I can't really avoid that in this construction. So instead, what we do is we go locally. We just go into a neighborhood of this point P. I certainly have an algebraic variety there, and it has, uh, it has a, an, a, an affine coordinate ring. So there's the affine coordinate ring of T, and then the S to T in my construction there is birational. So if I take, uh, if I take, um, if I take O T and then, you know, sections of this over U, this is an uh, affine piece, then uh, it's normal, it's a, of course, a, it's of course an affine code, and it's an, it, it satisfies all of those conditions. Right? It has a normalization. Uh, and it's contained in contained in um, H naught of S O oh, S so, so, um, F to the minus one U. Because the S the S, S itself is normal. So I'm sorry, I'm making a mess of this. I, I, I'm, uh, uh, but it is basically a messy, a messy construction, right? So, d saying, th um, so d doing doing this, this is uh, called the Stein factorization, uh, or it's called the, uh, or it's called the uh, uh, Zariski's projective normalization. So, uh, you know, in, if you want to do, if you want to, if you follow Grotendieck, what you say is you take, you take F lower star of OS, this is a sheaf of OX algebras, and it's coherent. It's coherent by, uh, push forward by Sayer's theorems about coherent sheaves. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the same as this, uh, that's the same as this finiteness, right? In any case, having got this, I take spec of it. Spec, this is over S. So this means over every affine piece of S, I have the construction, which is spec of the, uh, the ring of integers. Right? This is F, 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 F lower star. So, so, you know, in effect, what I'm doing is near the point P, I'm taking possibly large multiples of this guy, and then taking the guys that are regular in the neighborhood of, uh, in the neighborhood of D. Anyway, it's a complicated construction. I'm sorry. Uh, Usually, stone factorization is the factorization of a morphism, a finite morphism, and the morphism with connected fibers. That's right, that's right, that's right. So here's ST. Here's S, S maps to T. Uh, you know, S maps down to T. Yes. Right? And so somewhere, uh, somewhere in there, there's T twiddles. Right? So this guy here is the normalization. This is finite. Right, and so what it's doing is, if I've got that horrible picture over there, I'm just pulling out the whole of A2 and making it flat. Right, 
and that just means I introduce new enough new functions to make it uh, to make it normal, right? And now this uh, now this now this map s to t twiddles has I mean in the in the present case it's uh, it's exactly the contraction of d to a point. So this has connected fibers, okay, so right? But uh, so you know connected fibers means uh, connected fibers means here that uh, um, the t twiddles has you know, basically it has all the functions on it that are compatible with lying under S and over T, finite over T, right? Uh, so, um, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not specially interested in the, in the uh, professional details. If you want, you know, I mean, you can find a statement of this in Hartshorn if you want. Uh, but uh, the, the, uh, the point is that uh, a priori, we don't know that the image of a map here is locally normal. So if it's not locally normal, then I can normalize it lo everywhere, uh, everywhere locally. Uh, on an affine variety, there's no problem with normalizing. The problem is that the T is a projective variety, and I might have to normalize it on several different open pieces, and I get a mess. And why don't you take the complete linear system, and you take uh, this I still don't know. I, I, I still don't know that it's uh, normal. It's projectively normal? No. Yeah. No. Basically it's linearly normal. Yeah, yeah, linearly, sorry. yeah, 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 but that's the whole point. If I took bigger sections here, I might get, I might get linearly. more, fu more local functions. Uh, yes. Uh, so look, I mean, I'm, I'm making, a, I'm making a song and dance about how difficult this is, but really, it's, a, it's a point that you're never, you're allowed, you're allowed to quote uh, Stein factorization if you want, to. and in which case there's no, uh, uh, you know, this is. Technically, technically a little bit messy. You have to refer to Hartshorn chapter three somewhere or other. Okay. So uh, I. Uh, so that's the. Uh, that's a proof of this. That's a proof of this theorem. So, uh, so in particular, this is a, a proof. I mean, maybe I made it too long. A proof of uh, the. Uh, Castelnovo's contractibility criteria. If I have a minus one curve, I can contract it to a point, and that point is then non-singular. If I have a curve with a bunch of minus two curves, then I can contract the connected components of those minus two curves, and I get Duval singularities. So let me uh, let me say a little bit more about what we need to uh, sort of to make that last statement true, or e or even the statement about. Uh, uh, so if uh, S contains E a minus one curve, then uh, a minus one curve is uh, this is a rational bunch of curves, and so the above argument applies, and I can map S to T with uh, E mapping to a point, right? And again, I can say you know I can do projective normalization. So I can then normalize T, assume T is normal. Right, and then the condition that this E is P1 with normal bundle minus 1 means that O E of minus E, H0 of minus E is, uh, you know, XY. It's just homogeneous coordinates on <coughs> is a vector space x y uh, x y and then uh, uh, I can extend these two uh, sections h naught of o s uh, of minus e right and this is the generators of M P inside T. Uh, yes. So uh, so you know I had this I had this uh, I had this construction where I was taking uh, the very ample system on S and adding some sections which were not zero on on E. Right now I've taken the normalization. So I say that I I look at S and I have this O. H0 of OE of minus E is 
this two-dimensional vector space x, y. So now I go to S and I say I can find sections on S of OS of minus E. I can find two, uh, two sections locally near the point which map subjectively to this, uh, to this basis. Right? And I take these things and I think of them downstairs. Then because I have T as normal, these are local functions at the point. Right? So that's this F lower star of OS is, is OT. And then they, they both vanish at the point, and they, they generate the maximal ideal at the point, because they generate upstairs. In a neighborhood, you mean? In a, yeah, of, course, of course, in the neighborhood of the point. Right? So, you know, there's a, there's a non-trivial statement here. And this, this implies that, uh, that uh, MP inside OT is generated by two elements, x, y, and therefore P and T is non-singular. OK, so if, uh, if now S contains a bunch EI with EI squared is minus 2, let's say, and EIJ negative definite, <coughs> uh, let's say also connected just to be, make life easy. Right, then I want to say that uh, S maps to T with the, all these EIs mapping to a point P and T. And I want to say that P and T is a Duval singularity. Right, and this is uh, basically the same idea, but there's a little bit of, a a little bit of combinatorics I've got to say first. Okay, so uh, what, do I, what do I want to say? Well, uh, you know, if I have one of these lattices, so if, uh, let, let me write, um, let me write L for Z times CI, sum of Z times CI, uh, uh, sorry, CEI. Right, so this L is uh, uh, negative definite generated by the EI. <coughs> generated by vectors EI with EI squared is minus 2. OK, then I say that uh, this, there exists an N, there exists a Z, which is some sum of, uh, you know, uh, NI EI, such that Z times EI is less than or equal to 0 for all i, and strictly less than 0 for some i. So I already, I already had this argument, uh, because, uh, uh, so, because this matrix E, i, e, j is non-degenerate, so I can, I could Specify. I could specify uh, E i e j equals. Uh, sorry, I could specify same mistake as before. D times e, uh, z times e i equals minus uh, n i. Uh, so minus uh, uh, you know x i. I can just choose anything. Right. So, in other words, if I take any linear form, here I'm taking a linear form where each of the i's ma maps to some negative value, then there is some rational uh, divisor, rational combination of the i's with z times e i equals those negative numbers. I'm just saying, again, as, the same as before, I'm saying this matrix is uh, negative definite, therefore it's non-degenerate. Right? And so, uh, you know, taking a multiple. So I can certainly find some like this. Right, and I, now I want to choose Z like this. Uh, Z, so this is 1, 2, uh, Z, and minimal, minimum with respect to this property.
right? So, in other words, uh, you know, I'm saying I can certainly find some. Just because the matrix, just because the insection uh, matrix is negative definite, I can find some combination of these, which is negative everywhere. Right. So let's consider the ones that are less than or equal to zero and not trivial. Right? Then among all of those, there's a unique minimal one. So, so, there, so I, I, I assert there exists a unique minimum, minimum Z with respect to this property. And you know the reason is that the reason there exists a unique minimum is sort of not nothing very clever. So suppose suppose that Z one and Z two both satisfy uh, one and two. Suppose that uh, I've got two guys that both satisfy this this. So you know I can I can write Z one. I can write. I can choose the greatest common divisor to be a, and then uh, and then z1 is a plus b, and z2 is a plus c, and they, they, z1 and b and c have no common components. I'm just uh, taking the highest common factor, highest common divisor, the greatest common divisor. Yeah. And so if, uh, if, if, Z1, if Z1 has this negativity property and Z2 has this negativity property, then A also. <coughs> right, because take, any, take any, any of the EIs, take any of the EIs, then uh, you know, B and C have no common factor. So either it's not in B or it's not in C. Right, so if I take an E and it's not in B, then A times E is less than or equal to Z1 times E. Right, so in other words, so I just take some, I just take any Z which is negative everywhere, and then I say, can I throw away one of the components and still get the same property? And I can continue doing that until I get a minimum one. Yes? So uh, I, I'm sorry. This is sort of abstract argument, and actually, it's not. Uh, the truth is much simpler than that. Uh, so for my minus two bunches, for my my. Uh, so if uh, if I've got a n, this is this one. Right. I'm just going to take e one plus e two plus e three plus e n. Minus one plus e n. Right. So if you think about this guy here, each of the each of the curves has. So you know this is this picture. Right. And what I say, I, the, what I say, I'm going to take each of these with multiplicity one. So let's calculate. Let's call. I call this z. Let's calculate z times e i. Right. And this is equal to well for one of these minimum mi, 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 middle curves, it's. Uh, minus two. This is coming from e i squared, and then uh, and then it's uh, plus one and plus one. This is coming from e i times e i minus one. Right. And the only place this goes wrong is at the end. Right. At the end, I have uh, I have a minus two, and I don't have the one. And then so z uh, times e one is minus one. Z times E n is minus one. Okay, and then similarly, D n is uh, this guy. Right, and now I'm, I'm going to do. I'm going to give them one, two, 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 one, one. And then, sort of, basically the same, the same kind of thing. You think about one of these middle guys. Right, then I get minus four from his own self intersection, and then I get plus two plus two from, from the two outside ones. So I get zero. Right? Here I get uh, for this guy here I get minus four from his own self intersection and then plus two 
plus one plus one from this intersection with the neighbours. Right, the only, uh, at this one here, I get minus two from his, his self-intersection, and then plus two from this one, so I get zero. The only place where this, so this, this is called uh, E1, E2, E3, up to E, E9 minus 2 or something, E n minus 1. <coughs> right, here, Z is, this is plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, and then plus 1, plus 1. Then Z times E i is 0, except Z times E2 equals minus 1. Right, and then similar for the E6, E7, E8, but I'm, uh, let, let me just sort of... Let, let me draw the E8, because it's fun. But, uh, you know, th this is also in, the, in those different sets of notes. So, here's E8. I draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8. Right, and so I'm going to write down 6, 4, 3... I'm sorry, 6, 4, 2 and then 3, and then 5, 4, 3, 2. Is that what I meant to say? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so can everybody see what's happening? Uh, if I take, if I ask this guy what is, uh, so, so this is the cycle Z, this is for E8. Right? And so, you know, what's the intersection number of Z with this guy in the middle? Well, it's minus 12 from his self-intersection, and then it's plus 4, plus 5, plus 3. So it's 0. So you get 0 everywhere, except here at the end. And at the end, you really want, it really feels the need for a 1 coming from the curve, which isn't there. Right? So, uh, so, so here, I get minus 4, plus 3, so I get minus 1. Okay, so you notice in every case that z squared is minus 2. So z squared has got to be negative because it satisfies this. But uh, you always get minus 2. You always get the simplest possible thing it could be. Right, and now I say, so, you know, let, let me have S, S goes to X. So this is, uh, uh, you know, this is the minimal, minimum resolution. And this is the Duval singularity. So I've got a point P here, which is one of those uh, magic equations. And here I have a bunch of curves EI uh, over it, which is one of these one of these magic bun bun bunches of curves, right? Then I say that uh, if I take the maximal ideal of P times OS, so the maximal ideal is here, the maximal ideal is in OX, is in, is in OX. I'm taking all the functions that vanish at P and I'm evaluating them at S, right? This is equal to OS of minus Z. So the um, uh, yeah, I should have I should have said so the Z with those properties over there is called the numerical cycle. Right? The Z satisfying Z times E i less than or equal to zero. Z times E i less than or equal to zero. Strictly less than zero for some. For, this is for all i, and this is for some i, and z minimal. So there's, a, there's always a unique one of these on any bunch of negative definite curves. Uh, it's, called, it's called the numerical cycle, or numerical fundamental cycle, but I'm just trying to <coughs> uh, use proper terminology. It's called a numerical cycle. And then I can also ask for, uh, so in this case, if I do MP times OS, this is OS of 
This is some sheaf of ideals. In OT, uh, 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 in OS. And uh, so this is the scheme theoretic fiber. Right, so you know, if you do uh, if you do P and X and, and S, and you make the pullback there, then here you get the scheme in S, the subscheme in S, defined by M P. Right, so this is a scheme theoretic fiber product. If you want, if you want to think like that, but. Uh, uh, so, so here I'm saying that, uh, um, you know, let, let's sort of try and make this concrete. Uh, I take, you know, if I take, for example, x, y equals z to the n, z to the, let me take, let me take x squared plus y squared plus z to the n uh, plus 1, right, then this is the singularity a n. Right, then I have a bunch of curves like this. And here, down here, I'm going to take the functions x, y, and z. Then these functions here, they, they all vanish on OZ, OS of minus z. They all vanish at least once here. And that's obvious, because they... Uh, because they vanish on some divisor up there, they vanish on some divisor up there, and they have some component of zeros which is not negative. And so, if, you know, the, the standard argument says that uh, uh, the, the part on which they vanish has to be at least z, right? But, um, uh, but you know, x and y between them uh, generate OS of minus x, z at every point. Right. So the, the, the right thing to do is take this x, y, and think of him as being, you know, psi times zeta with psi is x plus i, y, and zeta x minus i, y. So factorize this. This x squared plus y squared is a product of two factors. And then it really looks something like this. Right, then this is uh, psi equals zero, and this is eta equals zero. So, you know, these are sort of basically rather concrete things. So, so, so why is this true? So, so let, me, let me explain why this is true. So, uh, uh, let me take, uh, take U, uh, neighborhood of union of CI. Right, so it looks something like this. Yeah, maybe I have, maybe I have something like this. Right, and so here's, here's my u. Right, so then take this, uh, take so z, uh, let me take minus z times ci. So this is always greater than or equal to zero, and it's uh, e and it's strictly greater than zero on some curves. Right. So suppose suppose there are, for example, in this case, there are two different curves on which it can be uh, negative, uh, on which it can be strictly positive. Right. And so let's just mark those curves for the divisor. So, so here I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this should be a diff different color. It's not, not an exceptional device. So this is, this is some curve which is intersecting. So, so the thing I'm drawing here is some curve on S with the same intersection as minus Z. Yes, and then this divisor, at least in any, in any small neighborhood of the curve, this divisor is linearly equivalent to minus z. And that means minus z moves around in a linear system, which includes 
something which which does exactly this. So I, I, I'm not I'm not trying to make this very formal, but uh, this is a simple. There is a simple argument that says something like this. Okay. So in other words, this sheaf O S of minus Z in the neighbourhood of the singularity is locally generated by its global sections. Its global sections look like the things I'm writing down here. Right? And they, they correspond just to the maximal ideal downstairs. OK, so uh, I think some of you want to go off on a holiday, so maybe I should stop now. <laughs> OK, so, uh, you know, read, uh, you know, I have, these, I have these different sets of notes and so on, and uh, the stuff that, I've, that I wrote in the notes is... <laughs> In, in general, more precise than stuff I say in lectures. So uh, follow, follow what I say in the notes, please. <coughs> so next week I'll start on a slightly different approach towards proving the same Bombieri embedding theorems. So, uh, uh, you know, basically a, a simpler approach to doing it, which is very, very pretty, very, very quick.